Hi, and welcome back to Further Westbound. And we have some fun things to talk about today before we introduce uh, the excellent jazz guitarist, award-winning, and played with everybody, and still playing with everybody, and that is Russell Malone. But before we get to Russell, we're going to kind of explain a little bit about why, why in the world are we talking to Russell Malone? Well, because Russell Malone is part of Indie Jazz Fest coming up. So on this is the 100th anniversary of the birth of West Montgomery this year, 2023. And so why not talk a little bit about other performers who have been impacted by the music of West Montgomery. And so part of that is going to materialize at a pretty cool event, which is why I'm wearing this hat right here. Indie Jazz Fest uh, is coming up September 27th through the 30th of 2023. Featuring Boney James, Sheila E., Stanley Clark, Pat Matheny, whom we've had on Further Westbound a couple of times, and Russell Malone with a group of great Indianapolis jazz musicians, including the likes of Rob Dixon and Steve Ali, in a tribute to Wes Montgomery as part of Indie Jazz Fest. We'll talk about that a little bit more later. So Russell Malone is a Grammy nominee. He's won Downbeat Awards other great stuff, and he had some of the most profound things to say about Wes. Uh, we got to sit down with him at one of the coolest places you could ever have a conversation about jazz, which is Birdland in New York City. So how's that for a place? So we had uh, Robert Montgomery, Wes's youngest, and uh, a, a group of people watching us as we, you know, put this thing together because everybody wanted to see what Russell Malone had to say something about. So Russell Malone and Robert Montgomery talking about Wes Montgomery. So check this out. So how did he influence you? When did you, my question is though, when did you first hear him? Okay, I'm gonna tell you exactly okay. how it went down. Um, I grew up in the church. Okay, right, right. right. And the first jazz guitarist that I heard, uh, because you know I was listening to to, to to players like Howard Carroll from the Dixie Amundsenbergs, mm -hmm. right. Le Leroy Croom with uh, the Soul Stirrers, and then uh, you know anything that had anything to do with guitar, I was checking out. So um, I remember seeing George Benson on television when I was twelve. And the sound of that was appealing yeah. to me. So I went out and bought some Benson records. And um, I read on the, on the liner notes that he was influenced by your father, right, right? right? So, and then there were other names that I came across, like Charlie Christian, uh, Tal Farlow, Bunny Kessel. So there was a guy in my church who also played guitar. He saw that I was interested in that kind of guitar playing. He said, oh, you like this? I said, yeah. He said, well, come by my house. I want to I wanna, I wanna, I wanna play you some things. And his name was Brother Ennis Claude. We called him Butch. Okay. And he gave me, he turned me on to two records, Smoking at the Half Note and Boss Guitar. And that ruined me for life, man. <laughs> and he gave me these records. Yeah, he gave them? He gave me these records. He said, well, he said, and at the time, I'm like 12 mm -hmm. years old. He said, you're pretty serious. He said, I want to I I give you these. And man, I, every day after school, I would take these records and listen to them and sit next to the turntable trying to pick up... Um, things that I heard your father play. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the funny thing about your dad, man, um, he kind of reminds me of ice cream. So and, give me that, give oh, me that. And I'll tell you why I say that. Okay. When a kid eats ice cream for the first time, he or she does not have to acquire a taste for it. Yes. You like ice cream immediately. Mm -hmm. And that's the way it was with your father. Yeah. And, um, you know, there were other, um, jazz musicians who I listened to, I had to listen to over a period of time in order to acquire a taste for them. Right. They had to grow on me. But it was not like that with your dad. I liked Wes Montgomery immediately. Wow. 
Yeah, and uh, what an analogy too. Yeah, man, he was. I, I mean, and everybody liked him. Yeah, you know, that was the thing. Everybody, everybody liked him, man. You know, he had that. He just had that thing. Kind of reminds me of of, of Errol Garner and Cannonball Adderley. Mm -hmm. They just had that instant connection yeah, with people. Was a wonderful guy too. You know, and I know, I, I know the story yeah, about yeah. him coming down to. Um, Indianapolis and hearing this guitar player that was just laying cats out, you, you know. know. <laughs> he, was and he, was, he was a wonderful guy, you know, he, he, he would come by the house. Did you knew Cannonball? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He actually, I have a picture at home of him and Nat sitting mm -hmm. with my dad on the back porch. Mm -hmm. Before my dad renovated it and turned it into his music room. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, he was really a wonderful and jolly. That's what I heard, man. He was yeah, jolly. That's what I heard. Yeah. And then, you know, when, when I got with Jimmy Smith, uh, I joined Jimmy's band in 1988, and I stayed there for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, and he told me so many stories about your father. And did, did you know Jimmy? No, I never met Jimmy. Jimmy was a character, let me tell you right now. <laughs> you know, as long as he was around his audience, Jimmy was always on, you know, he was always... Yeah keeping some keeping keep he kept something going man but funny thing about him man whenever the name West Montgomery came up that's the only time I ever saw Jimmy Smith get emotional yeah talking about your dad man because he told me that uh him and Wes together they were like a beautiful marriage yeah I mean he liked Kenny Burrell and all the other guys you know because he had a special chemistry with with George Benson and Thornhill Schwartz and Kenny and, and, and those other guys, but he there was something about Wes that just triggered something in him, man. And we, we knew they were really good friends. So mm -hmm. my, my dad talked about him a lot. Mm -hmm. you know, um, I'm sure there's major stories with my mother, mm -hmm. uh, maybe even my brother, but he talked about him a lot. You know, he had his, he, like everybody else, everybody's got their favorites. Mm -hmm. He was one of them. Yeah. And, and, and Wynton Kelly, too. You know. West Lovewood and Kelly. Yeah, man, those guys together. That that that, that smoking at the half note. I'm still trying to dissect that stuff, man. You know, um, how do you? You you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You need you need quite a bit of tools to uh, dissect what they were doing. Yeah, were man, it's ahead. always swinging, man. Swinging, swinging, and and, 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 and and you know, I don't think your father ever played a bad note in his life. Ray Brown said that about West Montgomery. He never played a mm -hmm. bad note, man. And Pat Buffini, he, he said the same thing. He yeah, said, I mean, I've never heard it. Never. He heard it. never played a. I never heard him play a bad. I don't think he was capable of playing a bad <laughs> note. <laughs> yeah. He, well, you know what? He was such a perfectionist. That's probably why you never heard mm -hmm. him hit a bad note. Because even while he was playing, I'm probably sure going through his head was. I'm going this direction, I'm going that direction. We're gonna bring it up, we're gonna take it down, you know, and just, mm -hmm. uh, he had a he had a brain on him that was, you know, God-given. That's right, man. And another thing that was so special about your, your father, man, was uh, the sound that he got out of the guitar. Because mm -hmm. sound is the first thing that people hear right. before you start to hone in on what they're actually playing is the sound that captures your attention. It's just like a person with a with a with a great speaking voice, like Orson Welles mm -hmm. or yeah. James Earl Jones. You know, you, you, the first thing you hear is the sound of their voices, and when you hear that sound, it makes you want to lean in and yeah, you're and, captured. And, yeah, you it, it ma captured. makes you want to pay attention, and that's the way it was with your father, man. He had such a beautiful sound, man. And another thing too, one of the things that um, made him so special among guitar players, well, from my point of view, was the fact that he played the whole instrument. Yeah. You know, some guys, they just, you know, they, they, they excel at playing single lines, mm -hmm. which is great. Right. But Wes played the whole guitar. Yeah. It was a, you, you knew that you were listening to a string instrument. Mm-hmm. You know, and I know, he, I, hear a lot, I hear a lot of people say, well, yeah, he transcended the guitar, and you don't really think about the guitar when you hear him play. I think about the guitar. Because that's what I play, yeah, and yeah. that's what I mean. I just like the sound of, the, of mm -hmm. that instrument, and his sound for me mm -hmm. is so appealing. Yeah. You know, he uh, played the whole instrument, man. Chords, um, the way he built his solos, 
Um, it was like he was, like he was a had a big a, a big band in his hands. <laughs> you know, nobody played like that before him, man. And you know what was awesome to me too when I listened that some of those those particular songs were not long. Mm -hmm. He could do all that in just a few minutes. That's you know I, that, that's I was I, I was talking to somebody about about that recently about how he didn't take too long to get to the point. Every now and then you catch him yeah. stretching out on, on some of the live recordings, but um, he just got right to the point, man. Yeah. yeah. And that's something that I'm trying to do, you know, okay. mm -hmm. just get to the point. You don't have to... Yeah. You, 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 Build it you, up to this fantastic. Yeah, you don't have to play too long to get, mm -hmm. to, get to the point. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and, and Benson, does, he's the same thing. That's right. He don't play too long. I mean, every now and then you might hear them stretching out, but those guys don't play too long, man. They just get right to the point. That's the way your father was. Yeah. Russell Malone, so glad that we got to talk to him and in such a great location as well. So remember, reminder, though, he's going to be in Indianapolis. Uh, Jazz Fest is the 27th through the 30th of September. And he's working with a bunch of great Indianapolis jazz musicians. Steve Ali used to be, for a long time, the music director for the nationally syndicated Bob and Tom radio show. A great jazz pianist. Uh, Rob Dixon just toured Africa. A wonderful saxophone player and others. And so that's going to be a, a pretty cool event uh, as part of this. And remember, it's that's Wes's hometown. Uh, that's his heritage. And this is his 100th birthday year. So hope you enjoyed this. Remember, if you liked what you saw with Russell Malone or any of the other people we've spoken with, uh, just click the subscribe button. Until next time. Thanks.